Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good morning, I guess, to some of our West Coast friends. Coming at you from uh, the Atlanta, Georgia area, my name is Dennis Judy. I am a uh, part-time technical representative for Eco Raider. Um, actually own my own small uh, pest control business in Snellville, Georgia as well. Been in the business for about uh, 40 years now. Uh, I've worked for couple of small companies along the way you might have heard of. I uh, spent uh, 18 years of my career as a technical manager with Orkin Pest Control. Uh, spent some time getting uh, home team services, Syntex home team services back in the day up and running and uh, have spent uh, about the last 16 years of my career as the technical and training manager for All Good Pest Solutions here in Atlanta. Um, Enough about me. I'm sure everybody is here to uh, try to figure out what we can do about the uh, the bed bug epidemic as it's occurring in uh, public housing, uh, private housing, multi-unit housing of all different types. And today we're going to try to provide you with a lot of tips that you can uh, take back and put into practice uh, play with the ones that you feel work for you, uh, share with all your staff and everybody else. This webinar today is being recorded and will meet, be made available to you. So uh, you'll be able to take it, share it with your uh, in-house staff. Um, we should have a lot of folks attending today from the public sector, as well as a lot of pest control operators as well. So uh, hopefully you'll all find that it meets some of your needs and you can find some take home tips that will work very well in your efforts to control the bed bug problem. So the problem really with bed bugs is their, their reproductive potential. And here you can see in the pictures, uh, a, a series of pictures of a bed bug taking a blood meal. So, uh, and as they uh, suck more blood from somebody's uh, body, then they start to swell up and elongate and you can actually see the blood within their uh, system and the coloration that goes into it. Uh, but one single, uh, female bed bug uh, takes a blood meal. And when that female gets a blood meal, she is viable for laying eggs, about seven eggs per day for about 10 days. So that becomes part of this reproductive potential that we have to be concerned with. We can expand on that. Uh, of all the eggs that get laid, about 50% of them when they hatch are females. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio of males to females. And the key there is that with half of those that are being egg, uh, eggs hatching out as females, then that's that many more females that are capable then of going through the life cycle and becoming egg-laying machines. A single female in her lifetime has the capacity to reproduce and lay 113 eggs. So again, compound that. Out of that 113 eggs, 50% of those are going to contain a female bed bug. Uh, so there you go. They go through their life. They each lay 113 eggs. 50% of those become females, and it doesn't take long until you've really got a big problem. So really, a lot of what we're going to try to hone in on today is this thought process that prevention is the best medicine. Quick action, if something gets introduced, is very, very necessary. Keep in mind, too, that that wandering female can lay eggs anywhere she goes. She doesn't necessarily stay right at the bed. Uh, she's going to take that blood meal, uh, and then she's going to have that egg-laying potential, as we said, for about 10 days. So she doesn't have to stay on that bed. She may not be coming back to that host again for a while. So she can wander anywhere through somebody's apartment, somebody's home, and... Uh, when she's ready to lay eggs, she'll find a, a good place to lay them, and they could be anywhere within that structure. Now, of all those eggs that are laid, they're very, very successful at hatching. 97% of the eggs, on average, are going to hatch out. 
So, uh, you know, three out of 100 eggs isn't very many to, to be concerned with. 97% uh, success at hatching just exacerbates, again, that reproductive potential. And there's where our problem comes in. Typically, people like to keep their homes uh, in a comfortable area. So we just kind of pick 70 degrees here is that comfort zone. At 70 degrees, it only takes about a week for 60% of those eggs to hatch. Uh, by a couple days later, more than 90% of them hatch. So they hatch very, very quickly. Really, within a week to 10 days, most of those eggs are going to be hatching. And then uh, the young bugs starting through their molting process, going through their life cycle. The average time for them to do that, to complete their, uh, their nymph to adult uh, stage, is roughly 37 days, um, you know, five weeks or so. So in about five weeks, you've got half of those eggs that hatch that are females that can start taking blood meals and having new eggs laid. So if you average everything out with the lifespan of bed bugs and uh, the time it takes for them to go through nymph to adult stages and the egg laying capacity, researchers have told us that a bed bug population, once it's established, can actually double on average about every 16 days. So a little over two weeks, uh, the bed bug population that you had is double in size. Four weeks down the rows, four times the size. So uh, as this population keeps on doubling, it kind of gives you the idea that it's very, very important for us to get on the front end of what's going on with the bed bug. Uh, if we spot one bed bug, we've got to take quick action. We can't allow it to uh, get in there and, and that reproductive potential become a devastating problem. So success in bed bug control then is about early detection. And once you've detected the problem, then you've got to be very quick. You've got to take good effective action to prevent that bed bug uh, problem from becoming established, especially in a multi-unit complex. Once they are established, it's probably one of the most difficult things that we have ever had to control. And that success, your success in taking care of bed bug problems really demands some aggressive action on your part and then a lot of perseverance. You've got to track down and you've got to eliminate every one of those bugs. And when you talk multi-unit housing, uh, public housing areas, uh, you know, they've got a lot of places they can go. So tracking them down becomes very, very difficult, uh, but absolutely is the big concern. Now, we will be taking some questions as time allows at the end of this. So just to point out to you before we go further, uh, you should have a question box on your screen. And if you have a question that arises, feel free to type a question out there. We won't be stopping as we go along to take those questions. But at the end of the, uh, the session, we will address as many of those as time allows. So why do bed bug management attempts fail? Typically what happens, people find bed bugs in multi-unit housing. They'll try to just take care of them in the one unit where they're found. And historically, we found that this just doesn't work. Uh, a unit by unit control plan typically will fail and you'll have uh, more problems later, bigger problems later. Uh, a second area of concern is a lot of managers in the past have made attempts to try to figure out who caused this problem, uh, whose unit has the bed bug problem, and then they want to charge the tenants for the services. Well, when you start charging the tenants something extra and they don't have the money to pay for it or they feel that it's not their problem or that they got it from the neighbor or whatever, uh, what that often leads to is they just quit telling you that they have a problem because they don't want to have to put fork out the money for it. So that attempt to charge people for the services often is the biggest reason for failure because they quit telling us they have the problems. So we'll give you some key tips along the way as well to maybe combat some of this. 
Uh, one of the third reasons, the third reason actually for uh, management failures, uh, typically we try to uh, use inexpensive help. Uh, we'll hire an inexperienced pest control operator or we'll have uh, somebody on our in-house staff that is not properly uh, trained uh, and these people really can't effectively handle the work. Uh, I can remember several years ago getting a call from an old friend of mine that had his own pest control business and he was wringing his hands. I mean, he was an experienced pest control operator with uh, about 30 years of service under his belt, but he had never treated a bed bug in his life. And uh, he had gone out and sold some rather inexpensive, what we call odd jobs in the industry. Uh, just went in with his sprayer and sprayed around and thought that'll take care of it. And uh, after he got the fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth callbacks, uh, it started making him question if he really knew what he was doing. So uh, if you're going to take uh, part in this, uh, th this process, make sure that the training is in place uh, and the experience level is there so that the work can be handled effectively. Managers and the staff have to become a part of this regular maintenance program. You can't rely just on uh, an outside person to come in and spray for the bugs. Uh, you've got to take an active role in being the point source for finding infestations, keeping uh, an eye on the pulse of what's going on within your structures. So managers of uh, multi-unit uh, situations and all your staff, need to be trained you need to be part of that regular program and bed bugs need to be at the forefront of the things that you're commonly looking for so this requires that you develop some type of a community action plan then to take care of bed bug, bed bug problems to prevent them from escalating so what would this community-wide bed bug problem uh, entail really you're trying to prevent things so uh, typically uh, you know in the good old days before bed bugs became rampant again uh, managers of, of public housing or private housing uh, apartments and things like that were reluctant to develop some kind of a program because that would be akin to admitting hey we have a problem uh, but attempting to hide that fact nowadays just doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, anybody that walks through one of those doors could carry a bed bug in with them. Uh, they can come from a lot of different places and pointing the finger as to where they came from and why just doesn't make sense anymore. So you need to really develop a program, community-wide prevention and awareness program, uh, and you need to take pride in the fact that you have one because that shows that you care. It shows that you're on top of that bed bug problem. And if bed bugs should become a problem or get introduced, then it shows folks that, hey, we've got a plan for dealing with this problem. And I would think as a tenant, that would sound good to me. Um, and once you have that community-wide program in place and you've got it in writing and you share it with everybody, then you just need to expect that all the tenants and all the staff and everybody that's working within that plan uh, cooperates with it. So manage the expectations. So what should be in this program? You know, to start out, you, you, you can get help from a lot of places, but uh, you probably need to put something in, in writing, something printed that describes, number one, just what is a bed bug? Uh, what does it look like? Uh, what does the evidence of the bed bug look like? And use color pictures, make it realistic. Uh, so provide this. Now, when you provide this, don't rely on the tenants to read it. We're all commoners. I have people stick brochures in my hands all the time and more than likely, they probably hit the trash can before I ever read to see what's on them. Uh, so when you provide this to your tenants to read, go over it with them. Uh, keep in mind that many of them may not be able to read English, or if you print it in their native language, they may not even be able to read in their own native language. 
So uh, make sure that you go over it with them. Uh, do that in person. Have somebody assigned. And then, uh, you know, you can ask questions along the way. Uh, just ensure that they know what it is to look for when bed bugs are being introduced uh, and that you've got their cooperation in reporting those issues. Also in this awareness program, uh, you need to come up with some kind of signage. Uh, I remember my college days when a piece of furniture sitting on the sidewalk was a gold mine. So uh, signs near dumpsters should warn residents about bed bugs on discarded furniture. So you need to come up with a sign that says, hey, uh, either this may be infested uh, the shot sign should show how it is to be marked. Uh, here you see one, Dr. Miller in Virginia Tech with some students, and they just put this big orange X over top of this mattress uh, as an indicator that, hey, this is a bed bug infested item. Uh, even better than that would be to go ahead and create damage to that item so that people just wouldn't want to have it. You know, if you rip that thing open and uh, make it so it's no longer usable, then people may just leave it in the dumpster where it belongs uh, rather than spreading some infested item back into your buildings. So make this a part of your program and uh, make sure people are aware when they see these things, hey, might look like a nice mattress, might look better than the one I've got, but it's probably there for a reason. And that reason more than likely is it was infested Okay, you need to notate along the way uh, in your program, uh, hang little signs, encourage tenants to report bed bug infestations. Let them know that the quicker they import, uh, report something that's occurring, even if it's not a bed bug, uh, it's better to get them reporting something to you uh, than say, well, I'll wait and see, because when you wait and see, uh, the population itself becomes big. Let your tenants know that they're not going to be penalized for bed bug treatments. Now, they may have a penalty if they fail to provide access to their unit, so let them know that. Uh, if you let us know that there may be a problem, uh, you give us access to the unit, we're not going to penalize you for it. And uh, we're not going to penalize you as long as you cooperate with our management efforts, whether it's from our in-house staff or whether it's by an outside pest control operator. But make sure that's part of the awareness program and it's understood. Uh, this is the big issue when it comes to multi-unit housing, tenant cooperation. Uh, it's absolutely critical that you have cooperation from everybody in order to manage a bed bug uh, a program, whether it be awareness or actual treatment thereof. Okay, every resident should receive a copy of your bed bug action plan. What do we do if we find bed bugs? Uh, if you have an in-house staff that can help develop that for you, if you're using uh, a pest control professional, then they can help you develop that. Uh, but make sure that your tenants understand what's going to take place if a bed bug treatment is to be rendered. Uh, let them know what their responsibilities are regarding access. Uh, let them know what they need to do to prepare their unit. We don't want them taking a lot of things out of their unit, which possibly could contain bed bugs, only to return them after the treatment. Uh, I think we're finding out as we go forward uh, in, in situations other than extreme clutter, uh, not as much preparation is probably better than too much preparation for a treatment because then we can address the situations that are there. Uh, but let them know, you know, that uh, things can be heated. They can bag things up and take them to the laundry, uh, put them in the dryer, turn the heat up on them and make sure that they're... Uh, uh, getting them good and hot, and that should kill the bed bugs. But make them also aware that whatever they bag them in, those bags need to go to the dumpster, not in the trash can in the laundry, not brought back uh, with the heated items, but the trash bags going out need to stay out. Uh, 
and then uh, whatever else is to occur, uh, whatever your plan of, of attack is to treat for the bed bugs, you need to go over this thoroughly with the tenants so that they understand what's going on and uh, you can get their full cooperation with it. So again, heat is your friend. Uh, if, if you've got in-house laundries, then place signs in those areas that warn your residents not to put infested plastic bags in the trash cans. Those bags need to be taken to the dumpster uh, and, and gotten rid of uh, away from the building. Uh, that is a critical point. Then we get down to adjacent units. Your plan has to include what you're going to do about units that come in contact with an infested unit. How do you address those units? Uh, bed bugs are going to move between the units. If you have an infestation next door, it might be where your bed bugs are coming from, and therein comes the age old argument my neighbor had them. Uh, and it's hard to determine really who was the first one to get them. So uh, let's steer clear of those arguments and let's just come up with a plan that says, hey, if we find a bed bug in this unit, then we need to inspect and possibly render treatment in the units that share common walls, floors, ceilings. So units above and below, units to the right, to the left. Uh, these all must be inspected as part of the same occurrence and then treated if you're finding bed bugs in them. Uh, oftentimes managers are reluctant to set up the adjacent units for inspection uh, because it may cost more or they don't want to alarm those residents and those other units that have not reported a problem. But to truly take control of this situation and make sure you're getting the infestation under control, then you've actually got to put them on a program. They got to become part of your action plan. Inspect them, treat them if necessary for bed bugs. Uh, and do that on about a two week interval for the next four weeks or until you have gotten rid of and find no more signs of the previous infestation. And keep in mind that as you're doing this, if you go into the adjacent unit, say you go to the, uh, the unit to the right of the infested unit and you find bed bugs in that unit as well, well then you start again with that unit and go to all the adjacent units. They have to be inspected properly and put on this treatment inspection program as well. Uh, we've got to contain them. We've got to get control of them before the population exacerbates, before it can get out of control and spread. Quite often those adjacent units uh, where the bed bugs are uh, may have bugs, but the population isn't large enough to make them very detectable. So be proactive. Uh, one of the, the key things that we advise people to do is if you go to the adjacent units and you're not finding anything, we still suggest you leave them on the two-week inspection follow-up and install some type of a monitoring system. Uh, the climb-ups that you see in this picture or, or uh, the blackout monitors or the Sensi monitors uh, or whatever other kind of monitors are available uh, and put those out to help you in your inspection. You will intercept some bed bugs and that will tell you, hey, the problem is here. Uh, use that to your advantage. The presence or absence of bugs in those monitors at two weeks is a very good indicator that the adjacent apartments are going to have bed bugs. If you're not catching any, it's a pretty good indicator that, well, maybe they're clear. Maybe the bugs haven't spread there yet. So again, that's uh, one of the, the keys behind all this is use the appropriate monitors to help you check those adjacent units over the several week period. What if you have vacant units? Okay, bed bugs aren't very active in a vacant unit. There's no host there. There's no blood to feed on. Um, so there really isn't a good way of monitoring a vacant unit when the host isn't there. 
the bed bugs are going to move out. They're going to go somewhere else looking for their blood meals. So the best solution you have is when you've got a unit that vacates, uh, have that unit treated intensively. Go in and have somebody drill the wall voids, whether it's your in-staff group or your pest control professional. Uh, treat behind the baseboards, but put dust, put a dust compound in those areas that will take care of the bed bugs if they're trying to move through the walls. Um, treat thoroughly with cracks and crevices with some type of insecticide. And then go to the units that are adjacent to the vacant unit and set up interception devices. Just let people know, hey, people next door moved out. We're going to be doing some extensive uh, work there as a preventative measure. And we want to put in some monitors just on the common walls in here, just in case something may be driven your way. Uh, we'll catch them before they become a problem. Uh, but make that a part of your plan and make sure everybody understands that. And then go about the same deal as if there was a, a, a problem in that unit. Three inspections, treatments minimum every two weeks uh, and document everything. So you want to check all the adjacent units, making sure that nothing has spread. Uh, documentation is critical and key really to your entire program. If that new resident that moves in makes a bike complaint, if somebody in the adjacent unit makes a bike complaint, be prepared for immediate response. So it becomes very critical then to train your staff and not just your maintenance staff or your custodial staff, but even the people in your office and administrative areas. Let them know how to recognize bed bugs. Often they're the first people talking to your tenants. Make sure they understand what the signs of infestations are. Uh, it's critical that they understand how bed bugs are introduced and spread. Let them know about the role of clutter and crowding in bed bug infestations. The more clutter there is, the more areas there are likely for bed bugs to hide. So they can be keeping an eye for these things. Uh, let, let your staff really know how to ensure that the residents are cooperating and preparing for pest control services. And then the most critical thing of all, again, is probably thorough record keeping. You need to set up some bed bug logs, inspection logs, treatment logs for every unit uh, and do this on a, a regular basis. And we'll expand upon that. But it may be uh, an opportunity for you when you have uh, staff meetings to get a pest control operator to come in or have your trained in-house staff people conduct meetings to cover all these things with the entire staff. So one of your tenants reports bed bugs. Now what? Well, the first thing is take quick action. Don't put it off. Uh, get there, do thorough inspections, try to collect specimens if you can. Sometimes they'll show you something that is not a bed bug. Uh, sometimes they will actually have a bed bug they've caught for you, but make sure. The second thing is to respond to them in a sympathetic manner. Uh, be sympathetic. That these, uh, these people probably are scared to death if they found a bed bug or they got bitten. So be sympathetic to the issue. Don't blame them for anything. Uh, at this point, contact your pest management professional or contact your in-house staff uh, who is experienced in, in bed bug control. They need to get out there right away and inspect the unit in question as well as the adjacent units. So don't just limit it to the unit. But again, put in your action plan, all adjacent units as well. Service any infested units. Schedule every serviced unit and every adjacent unit for that follow-up inspection in two weeks. Critical. Service every unit as necessary until there's no more bed bugs being found. 
continue the follow-up inspections with all the adjacent units, not just the infested ones until that primary infestation is eliminated. It's going to take multiple visits. So consider you're probably going to have to go out there at least three times on two week intervals uh, until you're not finding any more signs of bed bugs. And then document, 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 document any complaint you get, any inspection that is done, whether it's a good one or you found something. Document any actions that are being taken for bed bug control, any follow ups that you've done. Keep those logs, they're critical to what's going on in your action plan. So what should you not do? Well, don't blame the tenants. If you suspect somebody brought in bed bugs, don't stigmatize them. Uh, it's not going to help the situation. The bed bugs are there. So you want to get their cooperation. Don't try to be cheap. Successful control may require several visits. Okay. So put the time in, invest in the time and the effort to do the follow-ups as needed. Don't try to do just the unit by unit work. Don't forget the adjacent units. They may actually have worse problems than the one where you found the bed bugs. So make sure you're on that program of checking all the adjacent units as well. A lot of times people tell people, hey, your bed is infested, you need to throw it out. Your chair is infested, you need to throw it out. So uh, don't require tenants to throw out their possessions in order to get rid of bed bugs. Um, it's a costly measure for your tenants, and it may not help control the problem anyway. So uh, find a way to treat those items, find a way to monitor around those items, uh, if they decide they want to throw them away, then help them get rid of them, discard them in the proper manner. And certainly, it doesn't help to just simply move a tenant to a new unit. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Uh, they're probably going to take bed bugs with them, and then you're going to spread the bed bugs even further and farther apart. So moving the tenant to a new unit doesn't solve their problem. You need to address the problem. What can your residents do to help prevent bed bugs? <clears throat> well, we talked about it. Don't use used furniture that's been discarded. Uh, if you buy reconditioned furniture, make sure it's carefully inspected. Uh, reduce their clutter. Get rid of hiding places that makes it uh, difficult to find bed bugs uh, or difficult to treat for them. So get rid of a lot of the clutter that's there. Uh, talk to them about vacuuming and laundering their bed linens on a regular schedule. That in and of itself can help a lot and may bring their attention to the fact that they're actually seeing something. And then you might also want to uh, talk to them about ways to isolate their beds this could be by using encasements or bed liners on their mattresses and box springs. Uh, just simply pulling the bed away from the wall so that nothing's touching the walls. And then uh, raising the bed skirts up so they don't touch the floor. That way, bed bugs would have to get onto the bed either by riding there on the person or by climbing up the legs. And uh, certainly monitors on the legs can help in that situation. So again, a lot of training involved, even with the residents. Uh, <clears throat> management can help prevent bed bugs in a lot of ways. So uh, again, training. What do bugs look like? What do bites look like? Uh, the need for prompt attention if bed bugs are suspected. Uh, teach them how to minimize the chance of bringing bugs even into the building. Uh, you can go in and do a lot of sealing of cracks along baseboards and moldings or around pipe chases. Um, this will help get rid of bed bug hiding places. Um, peeling paint, peeling wallpaper needs to be fixed. Any other damage you find can be fixed to prevent hiding places that you wouldn't be able to see the bed bugs. 
if you have people that vacate units, then again, help them bag and discard things that they're not taking. Uh, if they leave things behind, make sure they're destroyed, bagged, discarded appropriately in the dumpsters. Uh, schedule regular inspections of all your units to detect bed bug infestations and document, again, create a log, document a regular inspection interval of every unit. And that's not to say that you have to say, hey, knock, 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 I'm here to check for bed bugs today. Uh, but if you have people gone in and out of units for other reasons, then take advantage of that. Your staff, your maintenance and custodial people routinely go in, into other units for some reason, checking plumbing, uh, checking a heat system or an AC system or fixing something that's broken. Make a documented bed bug inspection a routine part of every instance where they're going into a unit. Train your people to do that. Train your people to come back and document, I checked for bed bugs. Uh, and you need to try to get every unit checked at least every two months. Documentation is critical. This step in and of itself will go a long, long way to helping you prevent bed bugs from ever setting up house in a mass extent. So take advantage of every effort, every opportunity to get into those units and check for bed bugs and signs of bed bugs while you're there and then document the date and the findings. Again, these passive monitors that we talked about, the interception devices that are available, uh, these help tremendously during inspections. So you might want to target the bedrooms and other frequent sitting areas, but provide some of these monitoring devices to be used in these uh, units. And that could trigger a place for your staff to check as they go in there. Uh, it also helps the occupant, the tenant, to uh, notate things and report them to you. Look for obvious signs of bed bugs when you're in the units, but also look for not so obvious signs that a problem might be there. There are some little indicators that exist that say, hey, maybe we need to search into this further. Uh, if you don't have a routine service call within that two month window, then find some reason to get in there to that unit, get it checked, Again, the documentation is the critical part of it all. So obviously, if they have live bed bugs in various stages, whether it's on the mattress or the box spring, it's kind of easy to find these. Yep, that's a bed bug. So uh, the obvious sign there. But if you're not in there to look for it, you may not know it. Bed bugs will leave fecal spots around their aggregation points. So you might see a lot of these dark spots in areas where they congregate. And uh, when you start seeing these dark spots, it's an obvious sign. Hey, there's a problem here. So train your people what these signs are and what to look for. Fecal crusting on bed linens. Uh, you know, when they feed, they also defecate. When they defecate, they're going to leave these fecal crustings all over uh, linens and the edges of the box strings, uh, um, the mattresses, things like that. So look for the crusting. Some not so obvious signs. Sometimes you get cracks in the plaster, uh, especially with popcorn ceilings and things like that. And you may find signs of some aggregations just stuck in areas like that, that people typically aren't looking at or behind peeling wallpaper places like that. So uh, look for these not so obvious places where they might congregate. And if you look there, you see something red, something got smashed. It's on a wall. Uh, a lot of people, when they see a bug, they'll just get something and smack it. And if it's a uh, bed bug, chances are you're going to get these blood smears on the walls and on surfaces. So if you walk in and you see these little red uh, smears all over the place, uh, chances are pretty good they've got a bed bug problem. 
um, you got to look for the cast skins too. Uh, when they molt, they grow a new skin. They shed the old skin so that they can grow to become adults. Uh, and sometimes they'll crawl into things, hidden areas. Here you see some cast skins. It looks like a, in a box of shoes, the folded flap around the box of shoes there. Uh, but if you're finding areas that show some cast skins from the molting process, not an obvious sign, but certainly if you're trained to spot those things, then uh, it tells you, hey, there's a pretty serious bed bug problem starting here. Some subtle signs, you know, why would somebody lift up their bed and stick this paper cup under the leg? And it's obvious that somebody down the road showed them some kind of a trapping monitor and said, hey, you know, you could do this. Put that cup there. Catch them yourself. You won't have to tell anybody about your problem. So if your staff member goes in there and sees that they've stuck the bed legs down into a cup or something like that, Pretty subtle sign that, hey, they're trying to trap some bed bugs. Other subtle signs, sometimes people have welts from the bed bug bites on their skin. Uh, just keep in mind that not everyone reacts the same to bed bug bites. Some are extreme. Uh, some are very mild. And some people won't react at all. Uh, we did a Jewish community foundation that had 50-some houses here in Atlanta, and uh, 27 of the houses were infested out of the 50-some, and the worst one of all was uh, a young man uh, who had absolutely no mark at all on his skin. Uh, he, he looked like he was anemic, though, from all the blood that he had lost. Uh, and his bed was probably the, uh, the worst one of all that we actually, at that point, it was so bad, we, we demanded that it be thrown away until his mother got mad at us. Uh, and we offered to show it to her. The minute she saw it, she decided throwing it away was the good thing. Her argument was, though, my son doesn't have any bed bugs. Look, there's not a bite on him. And she was right. There was not a bite on him. He just didn't show the signs. So this isn't always the best sign of bed bugs. Some people react harshly, some not at all. Telltale signs. Well, let's see. Here's a window seal with more than a dozen cans of uh, insecticide stacked up. I'm guessing that somebody's been spraying for bugs. What do you think? So uh, this is just a telltale sign that they're trying to take care of the situation themselves. So again, you need to get in there and dig a little deeper. A not so uh, obvious telltale sign. You're going in, you're checking the air conditioner, and you notice that there's uh, pillows and blankets on the floors and the beds don't look like they've been touched. Uh, signs that the occupants are finding a place to sleep other than in their own beds might be a subtle sign that you need to dig a little deeper. Uh, there's a reason they're sleeping there. It might be bed bugs. Might not, but chances are in, some, in most cases that's what's going on. So again, look for these telltale signs and these subtle signs, and then remember that finding these bed bugs, finding these situations using these passive monitors makes everything a whole lot easier. So you might want to start providing these to your tenants as part of your program, uh, just a thought for you uh, to consider. But the bigger issue is keeping the log. Set up a log for every unit and keep track, at least on every two months, of getting in there to check them and uh, keep track of your findings. But I think that, more than anything else we've talked about, would go a long ways in helping you take care of the bed bug problem in your multi-unit situation. So where do they come from to start with? I know that there's always the finger pointing that goes on when you get into multi units. Well, they brought them in, no, it was them, whatever. Uh, chances are you may never figure that out. Um, they come from secondhand articles, secondhand furniture. They'll travel along the wires and the plumbing, the common voids from one unit to another. Uh, 
uh, they might actually come in in new furniture that's been stored in a warehouse somewhere with infested product. Uh, infested hotels and vacation rentals. Uh, so you got to think in every situation, I mean, there's a potential for bed bugs. Uh, who set there last? There's a picture of uh, uh, an airport. Uh, and what was it? About a month ago, I think it was Kansas City, they had to close down an entire terminal to treat for bed bugs because they found them in the chairs. Um, so who sat in that chair last and could they potentially carry it unknown? Uh, who sat in that movie theater seat? Who sat in that restaurant booth? Who sat on that bus or in that taxi cab that you rode in? Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are an infinite number of ways for them to be brought in, and you just don't solve anything by pointing the blame. What happens when people refuse to allow you to inspect their unit? Okay. Do you have a lease agreement with them that allows you to enter with a 48-hour notice? Might be something you want to consider. Uh, typically, if somebody refuses to let you in, it's a sign that they probably have a problem and they don't want you to know about it. So after you talk to them and you try to uh, ensure them that they're not going to be penalized and they still refuse to let you in, uh, you could issue them a 30-day for cause eviction notice with the right to remedy. Um, and we've always found that when this is done, it's not done very frequently. Usually you can talk your way in there. But normally, if you've done this, if you've used this, uh, this measure, you probably never need to follow up on it because it usually makes it effective then. And they say, okay, come on in. People may have reasonable accommodation requests to make, uh, and sometimes they use that as a means to avoid you, again, so that you don't come in and see what's going on. So if they use uh, a medical situation as a problem, then send a letter to their doctor. Use their cooperation, but uh, get the SDS sheets for the products to be used whether it's from your in-staff or your pest management professional, and um, send those to the doctor, letting them know what you want to do and get clarification. And then whatever that doctor says, really, you have to follow their recommendations. But I could not imagine any doctor saying, hey, my tenant's unit should not be treated, even though they might be getting eaten alive by bed bugs. So um, Make sure that uh, doctors are conferred upon if that's what they're using as their reasonable accommodation request and follow up accordingly. The most challenging aspect of it is people that just refuse to do their part. Uh, it might be elderly people. It might be disabled people. Uh, you might have to get assistance from social service agencies. Uh, to, to get them some help in the process. So every situation is, is kind of individual and, and the solution requires a different approach. But be ready for this. Uh, it's, it's part of your ongoing process. Uh, find a way to accommodate the needs of these people, but make sure that you're getting in there so that the, the problem itself does not become widespread. So your employees need to know how to identify the bed bugs, train your staff. Uh, you be prepared if you're a manager of a, a multi-unit facility to take a leadership role. Uh, be prepared to pay for the service. Requiring the residents to pay typically makes the problem worse. If they have to pay, they don't tell you they have a problem until the problem is out of control and you have to do a lot more widespread treating. Uh, you're not going to have any control over the infestations. You may not even know that you've got a problem if the residents start trying to take care of them themselves. So again, take a leadership role. Also, make sure you're aware of the laws in your states. Uh, almost every state has some kind of bed bug regulations now. Some uh, pretty in-depth, uh, some just some generic ones. But find out what the laws in your state say or your localities. Uh, uh, 
there could be a, a, a lot of things that you may not be aware of, uh, maybe even some record, reporting or response requirements. We don't want you to be the, the, the uh, situation where you're the one being sued. And uh, this just came out in the papers again about a month ago, but it involved uh, a case from 2010 where a jury uh, actually presented awarded 1.6 million dollars in a bed bug case out in California and these uh, these are becoming more and more typical uh, make sure that uh, you know the right products are being used when control efforts are being made uh, the fine folks at eco Raider have presented this webinar to you and they make a product uh, that has proven itself to work very, very effectively on bed bugs. Uh, a lot of this uh, has been tested in uh, public housing, uh, multi-unit housing. But at the end of that survey, if you said up there, the last thing identified in yellow is this statement on the next slide, identifying low risk and effective alternative insecticides will have an immediate benefit to consumers. Low risk is the key point here, and effective is the key point here, benefiting the consumers. So if you look at these, you can see some of the tests that were done. Uh, uh, Eco Raider versus Temperate SC, one of the tests that was done in a housing unit, a housing uh, uh, complex. And uh, you can see that the Eco Raider performed virtually equally as well as the Temperate uh, in this test, <coughs> but take that a step further, Washington State University uh, issued their lab report. Uh, that first reduction up above uh, was just common susceptible bed bugs. Uh, they did not have any resistance built. Washington State proved to us that when you were talking resistant bed bugs, Eco Raider actually performed four to one better than the resistant bed bugs. 100% kill on the resistant bed bugs, where uh, Temperate, which is a very fine product, uh, killed less than 20% of the resistant bed bugs in their lab surveys. So you want to choose a problem that has proven itself against uh, not only the regular bed bug strains, but those that may be building resistance and resistance be is becoming more and more common. So uh, Eco Raider works very, very well on that. Uh, again, university reports are showing that resistance is common and the continued use of the same pesticides only accelerates the growth of pesticide resistance. So you want to go in there with something that uh, has proven itself to not build resistance to them. And Eco Raider certainly foots that bill. Uh, Eco Raider is a botanical based bioinsecticide. Uh, it attacks receptors that don't exist in vertebrates. That makes it very, very safe to use around birds and fish and animals and mammals. Uh, it doesn't have the synthetic compounds in it that bed bugs typically are creating resistance to. Most of the other products out there in the market today are synthetic compounds uh, and they are starting to show resistance because of their overuse. So again, resistance can become a problem and uh, certainly the Eco Raider helps overcome that. Um, what are people saying about Eco Raider? Here are some statements that you see from some housing authority administrators. Uh, green solutions, uh, they found that uh, Eco Raider is actually working. You've got uh, Mr. Colton back from Helena Housing Authority in Montana. Uh, Ms. Sodinsky, Lapeer Housing Commission, Michigan. Uh, so she was talking about resistance in, in her statement there. Uh, Ms. Huggins, housing manager uh, of the uh, Sherall, South Carolina Housing Authority. Uh, Eco Raider's really done a great job for them uh, and they continue to use it. So housing authority people have found that the Eco Raider is working a lot better than other things that they have tried. Uh, what do the PCOs say about it? Well, here is uh, 
Martha Carlson, who owns Meritech Pest Services down in Brunswick, Georgia. And she actually services the Brunswick Housing Authority and found out that uh, the knockdown with Eco Raider was superb. And uh, she's actually started using it for German cockroach treatments as well. So uh, a professional here that's uh, using the product and swears by it. So ask your pest control professional to incorporate Eco Raider into their treatment regimen. Use it with your in-house uh, staff if you're controlling bed bugs in that manner. Or if you're a pest management professional, give it a shot. I think you'll find out that uh, it does very, very well when it comes to treating for bed bugs and, and actually a lot of other pests as well. So again, if you have any questions, we'll, uh, we'll look in the question box and see if we have any questions there that need to be addressed. Uh, this is being recorded so that if you want to get the recording, it will be made available to you if you signed up for the webinar. We want to thank you for the time you put in today. And there's the contact information for EcoRader. Uh, you can certainly make note of that. And let me check to see if any questions have come through. Um, try to get this box to open up a little better for me here. I see a few, maybe a few hundred. Let's see. And it isn't the action plan called Integrated Pest Management. Uh, does that need to be mentioned a bit later? Uh, certainly IPM is a big part of this program. It's a good question. And, uh, you know, that action plan is a preventive plan that uh, shares information. And that certainly all falls within the bailiwick of IPM, Integrated Pest Management. So uh, to that contributor, yes. Uh, Great point to bring up. Can a bed bug infestation start in an office setting or on public transportation? Uh, the answer to that is, yeah, quite frankly, it can. Uh, as long as there are hosts there, then uh, we have had situations where we've had to go in and treat bus lines that had bed bug problems. Uh, we have been in office situations where there were bed bug problems. So, uh, it's not just where people sleep, it's where people congregate. Uh, if a blood meal is available on a routine, then bed bugs can start infestations there. Uh, here's a note that use of canine scent detection can be highly effective uh, if you hire a responsible team. Uh, good point, another IPM tactic. What about contractor evaluation and contract administration? Uh, sometimes the failure is due to poor contracts, poor services. Um, okay, would agree with those statements. Uh, again, some of these things need to be addressed as part of your action plan. Uh, Obviously, the first indication is people report being bitten, depending on the situation. Contact with family can help a lot. Uh, that is true as well. If you've got, it might be a situation where some elderly people are living there and, and uh, maybe they need some assistance from sons and daughters or other family members. So, uh, or it could be a situation where even the people that are coming to visit may be bringing in the problem. You have to look at it from a multitude of ways. Uh, here's another statement that says, make sure you have a contract with specifications, uh, detail, reasonable warranties, and staff training in the contract. Critical for success. Uh, A point being made about steam treatments. Yes, uh, we, we did not get into treatment details in this webinar. That was not the intent of it. 
but certainly steam treatments are very effective when uh, used in combination. Vacuums are very effective when used in combination with uh, bed bug treatments. Um, can this product be used on beds and furniture? Uh, the Eco Raider product, yes, can be used on beds and can be used on furniture. Uh, it's very, very effective in those situations for quick knockdown on contact and does leave some residual behind. Uh, what quantities and cost does Eco Raider come in? Uh, I'm not going to get into cost issues with it. You can get those from your distributors, but uh, you can buy Eco Raider in the uh, uh, cases of a 16 ounce ready to use product, or you can buy it in the gallon uh, uh, quantity uh, as a concentrate that you can mix yourself. Uh, check with your distributors for your pricing. Does Eco Raider kill eggs? Uh, yes, Eco Raider will take care of all stages uh, of the bed bug, including killing the eggs on contact. Uh, how do you suggest inspecting other units without freaking out everyone? Uh, again, I think that becomes a part of that community action plan and setting down with everyone up front to get their cooperation uh, and let them know it's it's a positive that we want to come in it's a positive that we want to make sure nothing has gotten into your area so we're going to keep an eye on it as a preventive measure and hopefully that will not freak out those occupants and those adjacent units uh, what problem is presented by a pest control person going into a unit to inspect? Um, again, same issue. Uh, uh, pest control people, if they go into the adjacent unit to inspect, they're there as a professional. Uh, and it's a courtesy to the person in that unit just to ensure that no problems are existing there. So again, if you get a plan put together, uh, and you follow that plan, you inspect those units, you document the findings, uh, you might want to incorporate some of the uh, monitors in there. All these things come together to make it a proactive program, which really should be a plus for you rather than some negative. Are there any advances in the ER22 version of EcoRader, such as increasing the concentrate to more than two gallons or any other new products. Uh, looking at some new programs right now uh, for testing for other insects, uh, different formulations uh, becoming available, such as lemongrass formula. Uh, so yes, there are some ongoing things there. And again, feel free to uh, contact ecoraderpmp.com with uh, further questions of that nature. Um, this person says residents get uncomfortable with the subject. Uh, yes, they do. I would agree to that. But again, if you're looking at it as a uh, proactive program, uh, I don't think anybody is comfortable with the subject of bed bugs. But in today's day and age, bed bugs are becoming uh, a fact. Uh, so talking about the prevention of and taking care of them, uh, certainly I think becomes a positive rather than uh, something that should make them uncomfortable. Does this product work on other insects? Uh, I think we said that earlier. Yes, it does. Uh, uh, actually, you can use it on cockroaches. You can use it on ants. You can use it on a lot of the uh, uh, perimeter pests. Uh, we're actually doing some work with it right now, setting up some tests with it to uh, see the effects it has on mosquito control, things of that nature. So uh, it does have more use than just bed bugs. Uh, here's a, a person that says, I don't agree with the use of pesticide on either beds or furniture. Uh, this is just not a good practice, even if allowed by the label. Yep. It's, uh, it's all part of your own plan. It's what you want to do with it. So. Uh, if you are steaming and if you're vacuuming, uh, then 
if that's working for you, uh, I'd say go for it. Uh, so everybody has their own comfort levels and their own concerns. Uh, do you have any testimonials from pest controllers that have used Eco Raider in healthcare settings? I would refer that back to uh, going to the uh, website, ecoraderpnp.com, and look at some of those. Uh, and uh, we'll refer that question back to uh, some folks uh, that can take a look at that and uh, try to get you a, a much further detail. I'm not sure if we have one very specific to healthcare or not. Uh, and they are a potential to spread bugs. So that was the rest of that statement. I think that's all the questions. A lot of those were just simply comments that came in that we shared with you, but uh, a lot of good stuff there. Again, I would uh, strongly suggest that you get a program together that you can work on that uh, would integrate the preventive aspect of all this, uh, have a plan in place, follow the plan, and if you didn't take anything else away from this today, other than the fact that uh, creating that log, getting your staff in there on uh, at least a two-month interval to put eyeballs on things and check for bugs, uh, that would go a very, very long way in helping you prevent uh, uh, an infestation should it be introduced from becoming uh, severe. Uh, barring no other questions coming in at this time, we appreciate your tuning in today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, look forward to the video coming out once it's uh, ready to be shared. Thank you so much.